In this video, we're going to figure out how we can restrict the domain of the function f of x equals 1 third x cubed minus 4x so that it has an inverse. Here's a graph of f of x. And in a previous video, I would kind of reasoned through how you can use both the knowledge of the zeros of the function as well as the zeros of its derivative to figure out the structure, the basic structure of this graph. And uh, to recap what I'd said in that video, essentially we had factored this expression, set it equal to zero, found out and used that to solve the values of x, solve for x in the equation f of x equals zero, and we found that the x-intercepts of this function are negative square root of 12, 0, and positive square root of 12. We determined the local maximum here and the local minimum. This local maximum is at negative 2, comma 16 over 3. This local minimum here is at positive 2, comma negative 16 over 3. And we had determined this local maximum as well as this local minimum by finding the first derivative of this function. And it happens to be x squared minus 4, setting that equal to 0, finding the x value, and then plugging that x value into f of x and uh, figuring out the f of x value. In this case, it's positive 16 over 3 for x equals negative 2 and negative 16 over 3 for x equals 2. And that pretty much gave us our graph. But what you'll notice is that this function is not a one-to-one -one function, i.e. it fails the horizontal line test. So if you, if you pass a horizontal line through the function, there exist there exist values of f of x that are generated by more than one value of x. So what does that mean? That means that this function at large is not a one-to-one -one function. It does not have a unique inverse. However, it's possible for us to restrict the domain of this function so that it does not fail the horizontal line test. Let's say we looked at the function over the interval x greater than or equal to positive 2. So everything to the right of this line here. If we pass the horizontal line, it looks like for any given value of f of x, there is only one value of x to generate that value. Similarly, if we looked at the region between x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. So if we looked at this region here, the closed interval negative 2 to 2, we'll also see that this function seems to pass the horizontal line test. It's only, it's only when you include, I guess, on either side of each local extremum, whether it's a local maximum or a local minimum, that you'll see a failing of the horizontal line test. So it looks like if we just restrict the domain to any of these individual segments, so so this is this is one possible this is one possible uh, domain restriction. Another possible domain restriction is x equals two to infinity inclusive of two. So that's this portion here. So we covered this portion here. That if, you know, if we restricted the domain to only that, this function would have an inverse. Also, if we restricted the domain to just this portion here, the function would have an inverse. Also, if we just restricted the domain to x values less than or equal to negative 2, this function would also have an inverse. So from should be an, uh, this should be this should have been an 
open interval because infinity is not a number. So if we restrict the domain to x values between negative infinity and negative 2, inclusive of negative 2, we'll, we'll also have an inverse. So each of these three separately, like if, if f of x is equivalent to 1 third x cubed minus 4x, either in this interval or in this interval or in this interval, then the function will have an inverse.